James Silas, let's yeah. get in. That year was kind of low for those who know the energy you bring in. Is it you're missing Oris already? Just no, 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 no. James Silas. I thought I was, I thought I was heavy enough. It wasn't. Yeah, good morning, Lagos. If you didn't hear me before, now I hope you heard me now. I mean, I'm here live. Yes. Okay. So Oris. Let's dig this one in quickly. Um, Genevieve Naji is having the time of her life in Italy with her friends. That's according to the story. And she's been sported, having fun, international with um, an international Nigerian model, Oguchi Oweba Olandi, mm. posting pictures. That's why I see it's good to have friends who are, uh, you know, vacationing in better places and drag you along. I mean, it's even in addition to that, beyond them just um, going on vacation and stuff, you know, the last one of the few or past stories we heard about um, Genevieve was about her. You know, having like a should I say emotional or mental breakdown, like it seemed like she went into isolation, you know, to take care of her mental health or take care of herself. And then not much had been heard until, you know, one other time I and there was news that she was going to be on a new project. Um, I don't know if it's a Netflix project, but I mean we were just worried. A lot of fans were just worried because we, I mean, she was just out of circulation. She wasn't even in the country and still probably not in the country. And then the next time we now saw was this Oluchi, her hanging out with Oluchi, and it seemed like a very happy situation. I mean, that was like a lot of fans really liked that. I mean, I mean, a lot we just needed updates like, is she okay? Is she doing well? And this is actually proof. It seems like there's this withdrawal syndrome she's having right now. The only thing, even before these pictures of this, that looks happy, because most times you may someone may look happy, happy, but may not be happy yeah. because of the, just the history of some of the stories we've seen before now. But the thing is, now she posts pictures and just leave cryptic messages and all of those. So are we sure we can take this to the bank and say, truly, our Genevieve and Naji is coming out of the sun and ready to play once again? I mean... Not everybody really wants to put their business out on social media like that, you know. And um, she doesn't really owe us much in terms of um, giving us updates on how she's doing and stuff. But we, at least, people knew that she even put it out there that she was going to take care of herself, you know. But um, like I said, sometimes you want to show yourself a lot more to your real friends than, mm -hmm. you know, social media and stuff. But I, I feel like I believe that she's doing well, she's fine. You know, because I could add one and two together. The last time I heard of Genevieve was from the interview granted by Yul's dad. Yeah, Peter, Peter, Doche. Peter Doche, Where in passing, he mentioned, they was talking about some of these Nollywood um, actresses who have come to pass as daughters to him. And mm -hmm. he said Genevieve is one of them. But she seemed like um, she has not been communicating with him. That's where, what I'm saying. So that's, where, that's what I could get. For someone of his status to yeah. mention that, I took that Sarah and Bernie and he said, okay, I just hope she's well. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You see that she went into isolation. She went in to take care of herself at the time, you know, and which I feel like um, is actually necessary. Sometimes the provision can be too loud that it gets deafening, you know, so you just want to take a break off that spotlight. So, um, but I think she's, I mean, I feel like I believe that we're going to see more of her in no time, you know. It's what it is. Let's move on now to our own Two Baba at this point in time. Two Baba, uh, Two Face Idibia, well, does not want anyone to steal his wife, Annie <laughs> Macaulay Idibia, from him. So, Baba is definitely guiding the African queen jealously i mean i should be close be marking like uh, you know sometimes I, even as much as um tubaba i believe that it was just maybe just hyping or you know more or less um putting the wife on the spotlights it's something that comes off and on like that and uh, i think that they have a beautiful beautiful relationship and which has also faced a lot of um, criticism from you know different angles both the mainstream yeah. media social media and, and so on so once in a while when you see your wife in the, in, you just wake up and say okay where are you going to why are you looking so pretty why are you, you know? so i think it's um it's it, it can be fun to watch and see sometimes i like when you put that she looks so beautiful and you're like why are you so beautiful where are you <laughs> going <laughs> well come and take a hug before you go or you probably you can. but then i just want to put this out there 
Uh, because you mentioned they've had their own fair share of ups and downs. And yeah. I remember the last time, it usually comes around that September into October, and then they have a way of signing out the year, and then it becomes <laughs> an Edibia all over. They sign out the last quarter of the year, but we just hope that with the. They seem to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know how. How do you know it's about September? <laughs> we the great buying. Come on, this wow. thing. Is <laughs> and uh, I keep a close tab on the Edibias because uh, Two Faced Edibia is one guy who I really know that he's done a great deal for the Nigerian industry and I True. wish him very well. Yeah, absolutely. And let's get on to this next one. Uh, well, still keeping it in Nigeria here, and that has to do with uh, Omo Baba Olowo. That uh, David Adeleke, OBO. Well, feels like after putting the hard work in, it feels like if you work hard, you should also play hard, eat hard, spend hard also. Uh, what could he be spending his money on this time around after the Timeless album? Yeah, so it's a, it's a necklace. I mean, I, David is, like you said, somebody who works really hard and balls really, really, really hard. As in, David knows how to spend his money, you know. And, um, you know, interestingly... Um, I mean, from people who are closer or who, you know, to the family, um, David is also, even as much as you see the whole of the flashy things here and there, David, David is very, very disciplined, even with um, money. He makes a lot of money, you do understand? And um, he also has a family and a father who sort of guides even his financial um, um, attitude or the financial, I, w- I don't want to call it excesses, but... You see, when David buys or splurges a million dollars or a million naira on something, just be assured that he has actually saved um, like nine million somewhere else. You know, so the dad is very, uh, the family is very vested in how it's not like they are controlling the finances, but he has people around guiding and also um, showing him, or yeah, pretty much guiding him on how he spends or you know manages his finances i think he's very he, david, is, david is good if you see him spend anything like i said he has put aside or did you know he has another investment going on on the other side i would still like to keep a tab on the video it's interesting you say he's prudent in a way i mean i look at it spending that amount on a necklace it doesn't come i know it's not my money i didn't work for it for <laughs> it with it along with him it's but it's money but i'm just saying doesn't look it doesn't come across as prudent or wise to me yeah it's that, that's i mean that's for you but don't forget that then an industry it's showbiz that's how um, so sometimes he won't tell you that oh he had to um let go of one of that jury that he's had for five years or, or do you understand yes and he had to let go of that one or trade that one in to get this new one he, he, those information don't usually come out like that but i want to believe that um he's not throwing all his i mean he's he's not a kid he has a family to take care of, you know, for himself as well, apart from the people that he's also responsible to. So I believe that, like I said, if David is spending a millionaire on something right now, there's a stash of more that has been kept and invested in other um, businesses. Look, so I don't think that. At this rate, you're buying yourself for something worth about 350 carats mm-hmm. that started with diamonds. That's what we're told now. Why won't I, after this show, at the end of my shift, mm. intend to probably trek down to for the video. Mm. At least somebody at least is riding. Why would people even begin to ride bicycles or do something to get to him from Benue or wherever <laughs> in that part of the world? I mean, that's part of what it comes with the territory. People, some people want attention. Some people don't forget. I want some guys um, back in the day. Did he walk or run or something for the? past president of Nigeria. Yes. Do you understand? I mean, I don't even know if he, if anybody noticed, if the president noticed him at the end of the day, but this, that's something David has been known for. David, if you do something that sort of gets attention, he wants to reward, he wants to dash you something. Do you understand? So it's been his move since day one. You know, so um, I believe that he knows what he's doing. If And then look at that, the media um, has a way of making things look um, should I say, should I, should I say, shinier, or just sort of have a way of? Um, because I don't know. I don't think David has come out to tell us how much he spent on that thing. I don't think he really does that a lot. But I mean, somebody somewhere somehow somebody you know how to just throw it out there, and then people capitalize and tell us the prices and stuff. But like I said, sometimes you don't know what he had to let go of to replace with the new one that we are seeing now. Well, 
I think he's a smart guy and he's making enough money to be able to splurge that much. It seems you, you doubt the investigative power of Nigerians on Twitter. I'll give you an ex- <laughs> let me give you an example of what happened in the course of the week. Yeah. So there was this uh, former BB and Niger housemate yeah. who brought her business to Twitter and posted her. <laughs> she was the picture showed her sitting mm. and then there was the arm of a guy and said this guy has been making me happy yeah the guy the guy's hand has um he had tattoo, tattoo. Uh, it was less than let's just say in 24 hours nigerians went on twitter went around with that we tw- with that tattoo they were able to trace and say this is the dj you are dating <laughs> correctly yeah. so, i mean yes we get it i mean it's what it is the truth is that for any picture or any Part of the body that you see on, his, on Instagram, <laughs> he was cut off from a full picture. Oh my God. So yes, definitely people will find out. People will, you know, yes. dig out wherever that full or that information is. But I mean, David's situation, I just maintain that. Um, like I said, I know, like from you know, from the behind the scenes, we I know that he has a grounded family setting. Mm. Who know that there's a family wealth that must be kept. You know, I must be there. I must continue generation. growing. Yes, generation, generation. So, but he's even making a lot of money. That's the truth. He's making a lot of money from concerts, from the record, from the catalog of hits that he has. He's making so much money in, in dollars for that matter. So, I mean, somebody who has, who has one million dollars, if he decides to say, okay, I want to put three hundred, three hundred dollars, thousand dollars on jewelry, it is money. It's, he can do whatever he wants. With okay, it. I know. But then he's. A- that's why it's unavailable presently. But <laughs> let's get into this message from Daniel Olotu. Daniel Olotu comes in with a message reacting to Davido's splodging on um, the jury. Apart from the luxury cars that depreciate, Davido spends money on real diamonds and gold, etc. Is actually an investment, confirming what you, you mentioned about yeah. him now, that it's more like a deliberate investment. You know, some people um, convert their money to gold. And just keep it somewhere, and that's it. Um, I don't think David spends as much as Bonner Boy. I don't think he spends as much mm, as Bonner Boy. But why don't we get to see more? Of the, yes, because Bonner Boy is... has a tight circle. You don't really who who will tell you about Bonner Boy? Yeah, that guy has, has done a circle. grady to keep that tight circle tight. Yeah, Bonner Boy has. I mean, most of the people that is closer or that are around him are actually more of close family. That's what you understand? Close family. So he has his friends, not like he doesn't have his friends, but close family. Right. So it will be like, they will, I think it, it maybe it comes out like, if this thing leaks, I know that one person is yes. in the circle, yes. you yes. will leave. Yes. And you don't want to leave that circle, so you better keep it yes. secret. So <laughs> th- that's one person that you, I don't know. So, but Bonaboy, I mean, if you, look, if you look at Instagram today, you see a lot of videos that are coming out mm. of his fancy cars that he's, you know, mm. when he's cruising around town and stuff. You know, he's plodding a lot of money too, but it's not as loud or he's not telling everybody people who don't know the story as much in july we woke up to this story that kiki palmer you know uh, osha raymond went Osenida. deviated from a show he was supposed to be performing and he's been he has been into this business of serenading other people's women <laughs> i didn't say take them home but he would just pause and then give them all the attention and make them look like their man has never been doing anything <laughs> so synonymous or important for them now, so Kiki Palmer here is just throwing shade back at the the partner now, who, yeah, the because as a result of that Jackson. video that came out now. Mm-hmm. So take us through that story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was I think yeah July I believe um, Osha's concert, and then Kiki went there with her friends and stuff. So I think the drama started with um, what she was wearing. I mean, she was wearing this see-through um, outfit, and. Um, <laughs> And so while Osha was performing, Osha actually went to her table, you know, to her circle to sing to her and everything. And but be- even before that, um, well, I think maybe from that photograph that went out on social media, the husband had now um, tweeted and said something like, um, "Is the dress for me or something? Yeah. The outfit for me?" And you're well, a mom, you know. <laughs> I I saw th- I saw the video <laughs> on his behalf. But then, the, in the defense, the way well the liberal, the liberated woman would say now is, mm. so what am I wearing? What mm. is there? So I, I'm actually thinking that the hus- um, the boyfriend wasn't really didn't mean any harm. Mm. You know, I I just felt like he posted it to say, oh like oh I like you it. look at what you're wearing. You know, yeah. in a fun way. Even though people on in, on Twitter, you know, Twitter is not a place where you can just don't play around. You have, you are saying a, make sure you say a, say a, make it clear that you're saying a. But 
you know, if you live anti cryptic, people are going to um turn down to you. So but I, I believe that he was not really criticizing in terms of like why are you looking like this? It was pretty she, he was pretty much just saying, Oh my days is the outfit for me. Like I can tease, like you're a mom or like you know, you can look your wife you can say what is wrong? Are you, are yeah, you not into imagination. I mean, when she she spinned around and we saw it. Exactly. So exactly. So it was just I, funny that you know. So when the husband, um, the boyfriend, tweeted that, you know, that sort of caused a lot of um, attention on social media and stuff. Then recently, what had now happened is that um, Osha released a new song. Um, it was I think seventeenth yesterday. Uh, so August, yesterday. Yeah, when, that's August when, on Wednesday. On Wednesday, yeah, yeah, yesterday. And um, the video girl, or more or less the Big cameo team. was yeah. um, Kiki. Kiki was um, miming the song. In fact, Kiki actually opened the song dressed like Usher. And it kept going back. There's, it was a really, I mean, people need to go to check it out. It's, um, oh, there, what's the title of the song again, please? Can you help me with that? Uh, boyfriend. Boyfriend. Yes. Yes. So, the... The... the, the so. Kiki opened the song literally. Yeah. It, Usher's video book. It was Kiki that started it, and then also dancing and making moves like Usher. And then later, um, the video shows. Like, let me not tell you everything. You check it out on YouTube. And but finally, at the tail end of it, um, Kiki was sleeping, and then got a call, and it was. It, it didn't show who it was at first, and then maybe something she was supposed to be somewhere else, you know. And then she goes, oh. Like I was, I came late or I was late. I yeah. couldn't make the event or the outing. Outing. Um, I'm a mom, you know. That statement um, is actually. I think she said I'm a mom, you know. Say, so, but that statement really um, was just off that whole controversy that happened back in July. So bringing it back now was just really funny. She used, I mean, turned everything to her. To it was, it became fun. Turned it to her advantage. Turned it to. It was just nice to watch and hear her say that. So it was really funny for people who really. Who follow the story, you just connect and just catch the point, you know, in that particular statement. Look, Usha is taking this too far. That's what I would say. It's you pay a compliment to a man, <laughs> lady, the next thing you are following it up with a video, a song. A so, so the funny thing said, if you're looking for your, if you're looking for your, for your girlfriend or something, and you say I should not be worried. No, so, so this is the funny thing. Say, if you're looking for your girlfriend, um, oh no, if you're looking for me, yeah, yeah, if you're looking for me, yeah. um, that you find maybe like find me where your girlfriend is <laughs> something like that like if you're looking for me yeah find me where your girlfriend is. i think that's yeah or find me where your boyfriend so, just something like that you know but it's just funny i think it's all fun they all know what they're doing so you see why two baba came out protecting <laughs> his, you see why two baba is protecting his territory marking it very well you will not say you mistake you didn't see the territory <laughs> marking it properly and can we say shout out to usher usher is 44 and if you've seen that video usher looked like you know from how many well, years ago so probably shout out to him Darius maybe. Jackson didn't do his job probably and someone is going to take his woman home I no that's not, that's not gonna happen okay uh Mercy Johnson to sue firm over alleged breach of intellectual property Mercy Johnson doesn't just come into the news like she's mm. not, not that type of person but when she does you know it must be serious mm. so she was a brand ambassador for a makeup line and um, the contract or the deal ended last year October yes. but the said brand is still using her image and you know whatever they've shot before to um, for their campaign or promotion and she's out here to say um, they need to stop that she's not a brand ambassador and they need to stop using her image or likeness for their promotions um, so what in this situation I think uh, what needs to happen is they need to go back to the contract that was signed earlier sometimes you have to look at it did you miss out anything is there any part where that says even if you have finished after your contract that they have the right to use yeah, continue using the image or whatever but i think um she has her lawyers on the on the situation and i think they'll come to um maybe a balance or to a meeting point at the end of the day but if they don't have any rights then um and they continue after this warning then they might have to you know take the case to court and yeah, let's hope they find a, a meeting point so that they yeah. don't end up in court and then yeah i mean the least you can do or the i mean simplest thing you can do is either um, review the contract continue yeah. with the contract or whatever but not to continue if the initial contract did not state that. Yes. That brings us to our final story this morning, James Silas. Yeah. And this one, stand-up comedy is tougher than skits making. See, this guy who made this comment has come up as different character that 
it would first be Sinzu, it would be Spendy. <laughs> this guy, so I can that's just to put, give you a hint of the skit making I'm talking about for him. Uh, that's talking about La Sisi Elenu stating it. It's not easy. Yes, I mean, so see, the, see the, I mean, I can totally relate to what he has said here. Um, so interestingly, when I always believe that when you're in the entertainment industry, you can you can change or do anything. So I've an opportunity, or I've had situations where I've you know been involved in making creating skits or making you know being a part of a skit, and that's supposed to be funny. But truth is, if I stand in front of a crowd to tell jokes, <laughs> they will throw and stone me out of that. So it's not it's not particularly easy. Yeah. Um. You see, you can um act something. You know, when you don't have people watching, and you can act something that can when you watch it, people it turn out to be funny. But then you now come on stage to tell a joke. It's not. It's not even. So it, it's way different. And some people can do these funny skits, but cannot tell uh, stand up to you know do stand up comedy. Mm. It's a different ballgame entirely. So, but and I have seen situations where some people have assumed because you do skits and people think that you're a funny guy in your skits, and then they came on stage to try to be funny, and it wasn't even funny. Like yo, what are you doing? You know. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. yes, it's what it is. I believe I agree and totally understand and relate to what he's saying, and that's coming from somebody who. Um, a lot of us consider as funny, but hey, um, I think I've also seen him on stage. Um, you know, not bad at all, but you cannot compare the skits, um, to... The skits to him being on stage. And even when you talk about people who do proper stand up comedy, when I mean, you don't see a lot of basket mouths say skits trying to be funny, no. too. not all of them can really do it, even though he can. But I don't think that's his, his thing. I've never seen Alibaba, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I've seen Alibaba once, one time with um. Um, the guy called um, Woli, Woli is something, I think, yeah, but not really, you don't see him as much, it's not the same thing. Oh. Thank you for having me and catch me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Peace.